to a documentary about the most important and influential empire in ancient Asia Minor, the Hittites. In the 18th century BC, the Hittites began- Wait, really? You're gonna use that format for your presentation? It's so cheesy. And you have all your facts wrong. Influential? Important? That sounds more like Rome to me. I'm just kidding. The Hittites actually accomplished quite a few things considering that they were an empire that no one has ever heard of. But we've set out to change that. Introducing the Hittites, masters of ironworking and ghosts to all history textbooks. In the late 18th century, the first Hittite people migrated to the Anatolian Plateau located in modern-day Turkey. Traders from this new settlement observed Mesopotamia, and after seeing the natives' widespread success, decided to imitate them and set up a settlement along the Halys River Valley. Despite being late bloomers, the Hittites were the first Indo-Europeans to develop a civilization. They gained power and influence rapidly due to their agricultural-based economy, whose income came from domesticated animals, grains, produce, copper, bronze, silver, and iron. By the end of the century, the Hittite economy was strong, and the people were ready to begin their first kingdom, the Old Kingdom. A new dynastic cycle was implemented, and the Hittites formed their first government. The first monarch in this dynasty was King Labarnas. by the mountains. Perfect! A mountain fit for a king! After moving the entire kingdom, Labarnas decided that change wasn't enough, so he decided to change his name too. My name is the worst. I want to be one with my capital. Hatzalus. Naturally, King Hatzalus also made attempts to expand his state by fighting northern Syria and the kingdom of Arzawa. But then, Everything changed when the Hurrians attacked, and only Hatzalus' sons of pure royal blood could stop them. But his sons were failures and sided with their father's greatest enemy. I can't do this. It's too hard. We really should start working on that written language. Tomorrow, you, Babylonian scribe, write this down. Dear sons, you have been a huge disappointment to me. That is why I'm giving the throne to my grandson, Musilus, in your face. Musilus was a young and efficient general. He captured the city of Aleppo and drove out the Hurrians. As was common during that time, Musilus was brutally murdered due to jealous relations, leaving the crown with his brother-in-law, Hantalus. Hantalus was not a strong ruler and allowed the Hurrians to gain land and establish a kingdom near the Mediterranean. Because of his incompetence, the kingdom quickly transitioned to King Teleponus, the last king of the Old Kingdom. Hello, I'd like to apply for a state upgrade. How would I go about doing that? Well, first you need to make some rules of succession, and then you need to buy our premium empire package. And that's exactly what he did. The rules of succession reduced the turmoil that occurred after a king died, created an assembly of citizens called a Pancus, and of course upgraded the Hittite state into an empire. Next came the Middle Kingdom, a time riddled with conflict, civil unrest, and loss of territory. But then, there was hope. King Tadhalias managed to reestablish the Hittites' alliance with the Kizuadnas, he defeated Aleppo, Mitanni, and Arzawa after the second year of his reign. Through these defeats, he gained control of the prominent southeastern trade route. Unfortunately, after King Tudhalias' death, enemies attacked from all directions and territory became hard to keep. To add salt to the wound, Kashku sacked and burned the capital of the Hittite Empire to the ground, and control over northern Syria was lost along with relations with Kizuadna. Lastly came the New Kingdom, a time full of innovation and the Hittite's strongest kingdom. And now a word from our world-renowned scientist, Tiaran Starin. Hi, I'm the scientist. 
The Hittites were masters of ironworking and the first civilization to commence the manufacturing of iron weapons. During the time of the New Kingdom, they unraveled the mystery of how to keep the forges hot, allowing them to properly smelt the iron from the base ore. The smelted iron was used to create stronger weapons that could maintain a sharp edge for extended periods of time, giving warriors in battle an advantage over people using common bronze weapons. <laughs> This one I got for beating our longtime rivals, Mitani and Arzawa. This one I got for completing our defense system. Ah, oh, but this one I got for consolidating our main religion. Breaking news! A new god has been added to the Hittite religion, introducing Tilla, the bull god. He will protect your livestock and, more important, your bulls. Join us tomorrow as we celebrate the one year anniversary of Sandus, the Lion God, and Zababa, the God of War. Now time for your kingly update. The king is dead. The plague has taken the king and the crown prince. That ends this segment. Join us next time to find out more about the rebellion. After King Sepeliumus died, Merciless II took over. He made many errors, which allowed Egypt and Assyria to gain power. Assyria captured Hittite-owned Mitanni, while the Hittites attempted to capture northern Syria and Kashku, but failed. Many people were outraged by the poor economy and lack of progress within the empire, and they began a revolution. However, the rebellions were put down by the king, therefore proving his worth and making the empire stable. Shortly after this, in 1295 BC, Muwatalis became king, and Egypt became their number one rivals. Not long into his reign, tensions rose between King Muwatalis and the Egyptian king Ramses II. Sensing this tension, the Hittites began forming an army comprised of Egypt's former enemies and mercenaries. Egypt was outraged when they lost Kadesh to the Hittites with the rise of a new ruler so Ramses began planning an attack to regain the city. In late 1275 BC, King Ramses heard news that Muwatali was away from the coveted city and marched with 20,000 soldiers for two months until he got close to his destination. Once near Kadesh, Ramses spotted a Hittite outpost and captured the guards inside, who reported that their king was still away. But the outpost was planted! Muwatali was actually hiding behind the city with 48,000 soldiers with 3,000 of them in chariots. Naturally, the Hittites began demolishing the astonished opposing force until King Ramses released his backup army. Muwatali decided that this would be a good time to draw back. Although, at dawn there was no clear winner, so Muwatali suggested a treaty. The treaty between Muwatalis and Ramses became known as the Eternal Treaty and was finalized after Muwatalis died and his brother Hatzalis II became king. It represented a defensive alliance that outlined a peaceful future and a combined force against the rising power of the Assyrians. The Eternal Treaty led to the marriage of Hatzalis' daughter to the Egyptian king 15 years after, and for many years the Hittite Empire was stable, but not for long. The fall of the empire came soon after the treaty was signed. It occurred quickly and was very unexpected. During the last century of the Hittite empire, drought and famine ran rampant throughout the land. On top of these agricultural issues, the government also became unstable and many Hittite citizens rebelled against authority. This led the empire to split into many separate kingdoms. The widespread drought led to many people leaving their longtime homes in search for various things such as resources, safety, and some sought out just adventure. Some of these people became violent and were widely known as the Sea People. The Sea People had been causing turmoil long before their encounter with the Hittites, and they had already established a strong connection with the Libyan tribes. With the power of the tribes added to their already overwhelming force, it was no surprise when they easily eradicated the Hittite Empire by overrunning the capital Hatsuis. However, the Hittites did not completely disappear. 
A new civilization called the Neo-Hittites emerged soon after the original empire's decline. They were similar in culture and adopted many of the same beliefs. defense system. We are ancient hit <laughs> That's the end of the script! Oh wait, oh wait, in separate time. So oh, so you say like, three letters Okay, so you start with A. You, yeah, start with I a. say A, I, you say A. Okay. A, A.